Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. Hope you can hear me over this engine. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I search for oil leaks. I want to determine exactly where the oil leak is coming from. And on this engine right here, you have a, I have a little bit of residue. I don't see an obvious point of where it's coming from, but I know it's coming from that area just from all the buildup. Now, what I'd like to do uh, if you don't pressure wash it in this situation I don't really have to pressure wash it so what I'm doing is just soaking everything down with some carb cleaner and then if you can just really soak it on on down getting all those spots you're wanting to get everything as dry and clean as possible and if you have air that's even that's great um, you can get away with a lot of carb cleaner if you don't have air but it helps if you have compressed air to blow in there and really help start getting everything clean, get the big chunks out of there. That's what I'm doing right now. It's gonna blow all this area. I just wanna get it just clean as possible. And then I'm gonna go run the machine and let it warm up and see if I can see exactly where some fresh oil is leaking from. Uh, this particular unit, I need to get it super clean because I have to take photos for warranty. So I've, I want to get it nice and super clean where there's no doubt where the oil leak is coming from. And that's part of my job here. I'm just trying to get this thing as clean as possible, as quickly as possible, so I can figure out exactly where that oil leak is coming from. Get it fixed and get this customer back out making money with this unit. So once I get all this nice and clean and dry, just everything as dry as possible. I'm gonna let the oil warm up. I'm gonna go test this unit. It's got 622 hours on it. So I'm driving it over here to this place where I cut a lot of grass and this will, a lot of issues won't come up until the unit gets nice and hot. So I'm gonna go out here and since this unit's under warranty, I'm gonna see if it, there's any other issues going on with it while I'm out here. And this will be a good opportunity to cut with it and then I'll stop and see if I can find that leak. And this is a field, it's owned by the city. We come over here and cut grass all the time uh, to help get these machines nice and hot. So what I'm going to do while it's warming up, I'm going to try to I'm gonna lower this thing down. And I start having issues with this, um, the cam on, this, on the, the deck height adjuster. And this is a common issue, it gets locked up, it gets dirty. And I'm, what I'm doing now is turning that ter top knob to try to release the transport cam. So I'm going to put the brake up, see what's going on, maybe take a peek at that engine. But yeah, this is all dried up and just, you know, those are that's steel and the other part is aluminum. And just spray some WD-40 on there and clean it up and it'll, it'll start working fine. But I decided to look down here and man, I spot the oil leak right away. You can see it leaking right there. So right there, I'm either I've either got a cracked oil pan, but on these particular engines, it's usually the oil pan gasket. So I know I got some issues to look at. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and engage these blades to see what this deck sounds like. It sounds terrible. All right. So at this point, I'm going to hop off of it and lift this uh, cover, but first I want to see if they have the seat safety switch bypassed. Since I have the engine running, I lift it up, I see that they don't, it's just regular plugged in, so I'm going to let this seat back down. But I'm going to show you something real quick. I got the e-brake up, engine's running, and I'm going to take this cover off, I'm trying to do it one-handed. And I'm going to show you uh, if your seat safety switch is acting funny, you might be able to engage the blades and it shut off everything. Because it's, this one's actually working properly because I wasn't sitting down in it. But I'm gonna show you guys, crank it up, get these blades turning so you can see what this looks like. You see how that spring bounces around a little bit. I'm gonna pan it on down and we'll show you uh, that deck belt tensioner. So we're going to start it up. See how that pulley is like scraping, almost scraping the deck. It practically is scraping the deck. 
but that's always moving around a little bit as that belt gets stretched it's going to start hitting right, it so stop. right off the bat i know i got some warranty work to do on that engine looks like the uh, oil pan gasket's probably uh leaking oil uh, let me set down the camera real quick i'm going to show you guys hear how bad that deck was so i'm going to show you the easy way to um, loosen this belt now you can roll it around a pulley like I've shown on some other mowers but that's not going to take the tension off that spring so if you're needing to check all your bearings I'm going to look right through here see the hook right there and I'm going to take a piece of rope and I'm just using a ratchet and I'm going to put my rope around right there and now I have something nice and easy to grip to and I'm just going to pull like that and loosen it up now I've got the tension off the the belt tension off of everything. I'm just going to set this spring right there. And I know we got some spindles bad. Probably an idler. You hear that one's bad. You want to get the belt away from everything. That one sounds bad. Bearings. You want to get the belt not touching it because I can just spin that. I can hear that one. That one's real bad. And there's play in that pretty bad. That one's horrible. They're probably not greasing these. They're only 622 hours. All three of these spindles, both those idlers are bad. Can't grease the idlers, They're, so that's not really their fault, but uh, I'm not saying they haven't been greasing it, but I'm betting that's probably the issue. Now another time on these tensioner, deck belt tensioner arm bearings back there, see it's been scraping this deck right here. See how that pulley goes up and down? So and it's real stiff right here, I can, so I can tell those bearings are bad. Um, that pulley, this pulley usually is good. I mean, usually this pulley, for some reason, the bearings in it are rarely I'll, I'll replace probably 10 spindles and 10 of these idlers and 10 of those bearings before I replace one of these. So now it's time to drive this thing back to the shop and pull this engine or look at what's going on with this engine. And I bet I'm going to take a look at the drive belt pulley or traction belt pulley and those uh, tensioner arm bearings. I bet they're going to be bad too. Another thing I'm going to check are these bearings um, and these wheels. And I'm gonna, when I jack it up, I'm going to make sure if there's any play in these bearings for this caster fork there. So yeah, this will be, they brought it in for an oil leak. So that'll be covered under warranty. And uh, they're going to get some fresh spindles and idlers and bearings. So usually on these motors, it's not a cracked oil pan. It's normally the oil pan gasket. It's usually just the standard motors with the EFI that have the, um, the cracked oil pan issue. So here's just another look uh, before I take this engine off. There's a bunch of oil right underneath that uh, muffler there leaking down on the heat shield. And the more I'm looking at it here, I didn't, before when I was cleaning it, I didn't even have that rear guard off of the unit. Um, I could just tell it was coming from this side, so I didn't worry about it. But usually the more visual you can get on everything, the better. This all oil residue looked a little too dry, so I knew it, it was a lot wetter, just like that down there. Um, wet right there. Uh, one After I got the motor off, this was a pretty cool little deal. I was trying to get my wire brush down into a little tight spot while cleaning the gasket, and that worked out really well. It's these ones that kind of just attach in there. They have that groove attached into an impact driver. Here's a picture of the oil pan and I'm working on getting that fixed. Uh, gasket, I should say. That was I'm replacing the gasket on that one mower, uh, but this video isn't about how to fix that mower, even though you did get a little bit of uh, extra bonus footage of how to check your deck real quick. But really what this video is about, is about how to find some oil leaks. So let's go over some of the stuff. Um, you know, like I used in that video as a bunch of card cleaner. That's great when someone else is paying for it. You know, but if you're paying for it, it gets pretty expensive, all right? Um, but it helps you find clean off stuff really quick. If you can use some air, 
uh, get you, you know, uh, whether you're at home or shock or whatever, some good air is going to help. Having a little gun in, they can get into some tight spots. You know, you got those longer wands like I was showing you in that video. Another good thing to have a good light um, so you can just really look at everything you want to get. After, after you get everything really clean, you just you purple power it down, wash it, pressure wash it, whatever you got to do. Um, WD-40 will work great to help loosen up some stuff, get it all cleaned up, and blow it dry with some air, and remove everything that you can to, to view uh, with your flashlight where the actual oil, you want to see that oil coming out. And that's the only way, that's the hardest way to do it. I mean, it's not the hardest way, it's the fastest way. I mean, it's hard. But it's the fastest way to find that leak. You got to get everything just as clean uh, as you can. And use some gloves. Just get in there. Get it all clean. And then that way you can get to it. And this is, this is another reason why I say when you take in your stuff to your mechanic, take it in clean. Whether it's your car, your truck, your mower, or whatever. If you take it in clean... Uh, the mechanic is going to appreciate that much, much more. If you're taking it in, covered in with mud, you've just made the job take longer. You're wasting his time. He's having to clean it up. Um, and a lot of times that, you know, the technician or mechanic never even knows the customer, seen the customer, talks to him, the customer. They don't care. They're just there to make money. They're there to fix your issue and get you out and not have you come back until you have something else come in or another problem or maintenance. Um, you know, they don't, they're looking at the situation based on your car or your unit, your mower, whatever it is. Um, so if it comes in clean and easy to work on, that's the best way you can save some money. If it comes in covered with cow crap, dog shit, everything else, you're already getting off on the wrong foot with your mechanic. So anyway, take your stuff in clean, but uh, if you're going to get it worked on, but it, uh, go ahead and clean it anyway. It's going to make the job just that much easier to fix. Uh, once you get it all cleaned, um, you're going to have to do it anyway if you got an oil leak. So hope this video helps you guys out. Like and subscribe, and I'll have more like this coming soon. Thanks, guys.